Welcome back to uh, the class. Uh, in this particular class, we are going to discuss the ILP formulation for resource allocation and binding problem. Okay. So, we, have al we already discussed that this resource allocation and binding problem is mapping the operation into function units and variables to the storage and the objective is to minimize the number of function units needed and the storage needed. Right. So, the first you have to allocate the number of uh, FUs and storage and then you have to bind each operation to the FUs, each variables to the res storage. Okay. And we are particularly discussing the FU allocation and binding in this classes. Okay. So, we have seen that this problem in general is uh, NP complete and then we found a leftage algorithm which can actually solve this uh, problem efficiently for a particular class of problem when the complete graph is an interval graph. Okay. In today's class, I am going to see how we can formulate the ILP integer linear programming uh, for this binding problem. Okay. So, for this uh, what we do is basically we decide two variables. The first variable is B i r. right? So, I have given, so what is the problem? I have given set of operations of one type that we have already discussed that we will going to do the op individual operation at a time. Uh, say I am going to execute only some multiplier and then I L u and so on. Okay. So, the B i r equal to 1 if operation V i uh, maps to, to resource r. right? So, where my i can vary from 1 to n and r can vary from 1 to a. right? So, that means, I have a number of resources I am assuming and n number of operations and I can map ideally any operation to any uh, resource. So, that is why I take a variable boolean variable called B i r and if it is 1, if V i operation V i maps to a resource r okay, and it is 0 otherwise. Right? So, uh, in the ILP formulation what I am uh, usually we do, we find out all the constant needed and we should have an objective function and what this ILP does, it try to map the values uh, to this unknown variable such that all the constant get satisfied and whatever the objective function that is achieved. Okay. So, in this case, uh, what is our unknown variable? This B i r is the unknown variable because we do not know uh, where, how many, wh which operation is going to map to which uh, FUs. Okay. And in some cases, this A may be also unknown variable because uh, if, if it is not a resource constant scheduling, then uh, this A is not known to me. Our objective is to find out the minimum value of A. In some cases, when say we solve the problem of minim MLRC that minimize latency under resource constraint, that means, I, that time I have given the upper limit of resource. right? In that time, this also is a constant because I know uh, what is the number of FU is needed there. Okay? But uh, uh, what is the problem that I will be solved in that time? it actually give the this B r value. I know the um, upper limit of the upper, uh, a few available, but you tell me which operation is going to map to which resources. Okay. So, this is a variable that is uh, unknown to me and I am to actually I am going to find out the value of this using ILP. Okay. So, there is one more variable is needed what is x i l which we have already discussed during the ILP formulation of scheduling problem. So, it is equal to 1 if V i is starting starts at timestamp L. right? So, here I can vary from 1 to n, I am assuming there are n number of operations and A L is varying from 1 to lambda. So, lambda is something the number of the timestamp is available to me, the latency of the design. Okay? So, this is something this remains the start time of an operation, if it is a single cycle that is the end time also, but if it is a multi cycle it will start from the time step L, but it will go for L plus 1, L plus 2 to some L plus D i minus 1. So, if it the delay of that operation is D i. Okay. So, that is already known to me and during this allocation and binding problem this is a constant, it is known, right? this is known to me because the scheduling is already over, I know which operation is scheduled where but I am going to use this variable for the formulation. Okay. So, what is the uh, constant? Let us try to find out the op constant. The first constant says that you have the operations. right? 
I want to map them to a few. How I am going to map this? I am going to make sure that each operations is going to be executed uh, can be mapped to only one and only resource. Okay? So, that means one operation I am going to map to only one of a few not to multiple FUs, which is quite logical right. So, this all, all operation is going to execute only once right and just mapping them to one FU is sufficient right and that is also needed. So, this is the first constant. So, what is saying that here that summation of B i r uh, for each i each type of operation for all resource available uh, is 1. So, suppose if your operation is 1 that means B 1 1 plus B 1 2 plus B 1 3 dot dot B plus B 1 A equal to 1. That means, operation 1 can be my either mapped to resource 1 resource 2 or resource 3 and resource 4. Similarly, I have to do for operation all operations. So, then let us say this is the nth operation then b n 2 plus b n 3 b n a equal to 1. That means, operation n is either going to be mapped to resource 1 or 2 or 3 or dot dot or a. That means, at most one of this variable will be 1 right because I make the summation 1. So, it will ensure that each operation is going to map to only one if you ok. The next one is, uh, so it is a hardware resource you assume that there is a few there is a multiplier in one clock it can execute only one operation although I map three of multiplier to that a few that particular a few or multiplier I can only execute one of the assigned operation in a particular clock right. What does it mean? Although I can assign three uh, multiplier to this operation say for first two cycle I am going to do this. Uh, uh, operation 1. So, suppose this multiplier is 2 cycle and say say operation 3 and 4 I am going to do the operation 3 and say for uh, operation uh, 7 is going to map for uh, time step 3 and 4. But at a time I can only execute one of the operation because it cannot do more than one operation at a time right. So, that also to be ex uh, assumed right. How I can do that uh, given by this con uh, constant let us understand. So, the first thing is that what is try to find out? Let us assume that this term gives the operations which is live at timestamp L. It is going for all timestamp, right. So, I am going to for timestamp 1, I will make sure that only one operation is mapped to a few. I will go to timestamp 2, I am going to ma make sure that only one operation is executing in timestamp 2, in timestamp 3, I will make sure that only one operation is executing in timestamp 3 and so on right. So, how can do that? I have to identify all the operations which will be live at a particular timestamp. How can I find that? So, if I am in say timestamp L, so if the operation starting from here then it is also live right. So, suppose this op operation is multiple cycles right. If it starts the previous cycle and still going on then also it is live here right or it can go till the step and it is actually finishing here right. So, then where it can start? So, L minus d i, d i is the delay of the things plus 1. So, if it is starting here then is going to this will be the last step because it is a d cycle operation. Okay. So, all these cases this operation is live L right. So, this summation tells that if I am in timestamp L you check is there any operation started uh, L minus L minus d i plus 1 till L. So, this is a summation L minus d i plus 2 L is there any operation which started there then x i m will be 1 in that step right. If it is started there and the delay is d i then operation is live and then I am going to consider. So, this is this test the all the operation that are live in a particular time stamp and then what I am multiplying with that I am multiplying with that operation that are actually all the operation that are mapped to this particular resource right. I am taking a resource at a time. So, I am going to consider resource 1. I will identify all the operations that are going to map to resource 1. I will identify all those operations that are mapped to resource 1 and I will check among this operation how many of them actually live in a particular time step L and this sum of multiplication should be less than equal to 1. So, it makes sure that at most one of the live operation in every time step is executing uh, in that uh, in resource R right and that R can vary from 1 to A 
and this I will go for all time step. So, it is basically how many constant will be there? The constant will be L into R because for each time step for each resource I will get one such constant and how many this kind of resource will get? This I will get for each type of operation. So, it will be n right. So, I will have n number of constant here L into a R number of constant here and that is sufficient right for mapping. Then uh, what is the ILP formulation? So, if I assume that my A is not known, it is basically man minimization of resource under latency constraint scheduling, then I need to identify A right. So, then my objective function will be minimize A subject to the uh, unique binding, unique execution of the operations and the boolean is uh, the B i r is equal to boolean variable right. So, if I give these things to a ILP solver, it will give me the value of this B i r such that this is the minimum value. For this M L R C where R is known, the resource is known, I do not need this right. I just give this constraint and I just uh, ask the ILP solver give a value that satisfy all the constraint because this is this is known to me right. Some constant is given. So, then what this ILP solver does? it actually only give me uh, the mapping of this operation to the resource available ok. There can be third use of this. So, I do not know A and I want to see whether A is one, uh, say I try to find out the minimum value of A and how can I found that? Say I make sure that I just put is, is it possible to map all the operation to only one FU and if the solution exists it will give you uh, this is the mapping. If not it will say the, the constant is not satisfied that means given the constraint I cannot execute everything in a few one only one uh, multiplier right. So, then I can increase it to 2 I can ask the question to ILP solver again if it can give a solution that means 2 is the minimum number if not then you can go for 3 and so on right. So, either I can give this constant minimize or I can just check this one by one and check what is the minimum value right. This is all three way I can actually uh, utilize this ILP formula ok. Let us take an example. So, uh, we have this schedule which we used to take for uh, when throughout this uh, discussion and for this uh, I am going to take only the multiplier right. So, for how many multipliers are there 1, 2, 3, 6, 7 and 8. You can see here that since uh, maximum 2 operations are executing in 1 clock I need 2 multiplier right that we have to figure it out. And uh, also 1 and 2 cannot be mapped to same FU and so on that we will we'll see. But we know that start time ok. So, x 1 1 because 1 is scheduled here, x 2 1 because operation 2 is scheduled in time step 1, x 3 2 operation 3 is scheduled in time step 2, x 4 3 that means operation 4 is uh, scheduled in time step 3. So, basically these are the variables which is 1 and rest of the x i l is 0. For example, uh, for say operation 1 what are the variables available x 1 1 x 1 2 because it can schedule in time step 1 2 x 1 3 x 1 4 right because there are 4 time step. So, this is 1 this is 0 this is 0 this is 0. Similarly, for each operation there are 4 uh, uh, 4 such boolean variable is possible only one of them is 1 and what are the 1 is mentioned in this list ok. So, these are the 1 and rest of the 0 because uh, this is a constant given to me ok and I am assuming that my multiplier is type 1 right uh, it is a type 1 ok. So, now what are the constants? So, I want to see that for uh, so uh, this is a 1 a 1 is the limit of the multiplier right. So, I want to find out the limit a 1 and this is a 2. So, for all operations which is type 1 that means they are multiplier their summation uh, r 1 to n will be 1. So, that means uh, they can be mapped to only 1 f u right. So, this already discussed and similarly this is the constant for this uh, second problem that for each because here uh, this all operations are single cycle I do not have to find out that x uh, that complex second term. I just say that all the op operation that are mapped to multiplier uh, and then every time stem L. Uh, uh, so, the number of operation is executing is less than equal to 1 and this is for each time step and each type of each number of resource right. So, type is multiplier and each instance of the multiplier and this is the constant for ALU you can get them easily ok. So, now uh, let us say I ask the ILP solver is it problem can you solve the problem for one multiplier ok. 
So, if there is a one multiplier what are the pro problems uh, what are the constant we have. So, this b i l equal to 1 what does it mean that i is the operation number right. So, that means operation 1 because only one instance of the multiplier is 1. So, this is 1 uh, operation uh, 2 1 is equal to 1 operation because these are the multiplier right 1 2 3 6 7 8. So, then 3 1 equal to 1 operation hmm, 6 uh, mapping to uh, multiplier 1 is 1 and b 7 1 equal to 1 and b 8 1 equal to 1. So, that means each operations exactly we know uh, why it maps because there is only one multiplier every, everything has to map to one multiplier. And now what is the second constant it says that every time because the now the l is 1 to 5 the operation that are executing in time stamp 1. So, how many operations are executing in operation 1? Uh, so, operation 1 is say uh, this 1 and 2 right multiplier. So, so the operations executing say b 1 1 plus b 2 1 because operation 2 executing time stamp 1 and this uh, operation 2 executing time uh, using the resource 1 and this is all this x i l is 1 for this 2 operation right. So, x 1 1 into this and this into x 2 1 and this is 1 because this I know this is executing time stamp 1 this is also 1 right. So, this should be less than equal to 1, but I know that b 1 1 is 1 and b 2 1 is 1. So, this is 2 less than equal to 1. So, it will say that uh, your constant is not satisfied for multipl one, 1 multiplier and there is no solution exist and why, which is quite obvious here we know there are 2 multiplication operation is happening in 1 clock. So, I cannot do these things in uh, using 1 multiplier right. So, this uh, solver will give you uh, mm, uh, no feasible solution exist ok. So, now I will take say 2 multipliers right. So, then what are the constant for each operations either it will map to uh, multiplier 1 or multiplier 2. So, that is why I have written this for each i. So, it is basically b 1 1 plus b uh, 1 2 equal to 1 this is for operation 1 v 1 then for operation 2 it is b 2 1 plus b 2 2 uh, 2 2 equal to 1 and so on. So, basically it will be either map to multiplier 1 or multiplier 2 this is for 1 2 3 6 7 8. So, there will be 6 such constant ok and now this is the constant for this uh, uh, maybe in one time one multiplier can execute only one operation. So, for each type 1 so say this is for multiplier 1 this is for multiplier 1 because there are 2 multipliers uh, for multiplier 1 if this operations are mapped to multiplier 1 then all the operations running in time step 1 I mean time step L should be less than equal to 1 right. So, you will get how many constant here so, because there are uh, 5 uh, time steps. So, there are 5 constant I will get here and for multiplier 2 I will get 5 constant. So, there are 10 constant here and 6 constant here. So, total 16 constant I will get and if you try to under write this. So, it basically says that all the operations uh, which is say for time stamp 1 I know only 1 and 2 is executing right. So, what will happen? So, b um, 1 1 into x 1 1 plus b uh, this is operation 2 1 into x 2 and 1 should be less than equal to 1. So, what does it mean? So, either so, this is already 1 I know this is also 1 no. So, that means, b 1 1 plus b 2 1 should be less than equal to 1 that means, only one of them can be mapped to multiplier 1. Similarly, if, uh, if I just write for this one the first for time step 1 it is basically b 1 2 into x 1 1 plus b 2 2 into x 2 2 should be less than equal to 1. So, here this I know 1 this is I know 1. So, that means, b 1 2 plus b 2 2 should be less than equal to 1. What does it mean? So, either operation 1 or operation 2 can be mapped to multiplier 2 and if you just combine this and this it will give some value of this b 1 1 and uh, the uh, mapping. I will understand either this operation will be mapped to this or this in multiplier 1 or 2 or uh, an operation 2 also I can be mapped to either multiplier 1 or multiplier 2. So, this is how I can write for all time step here I just wrote it for L equal to 1 time step 1. So, I can write the same thing for time step 2, 3 and so on right. If I just write all those 16 constraint 
and just ask the ILP solver is the solution exists, is there any mapping B i r value which will satisfy all this constraint and then it will say this. It says that operation 1 is mapped to uh, multiplier 1, operation 2 is uh, ma mapped to multiplier 2 because this 2 is the multiplier number, operation 3 so that means multiplier 1, uh, 1 is mapped, multiplier 2, 2 is mapped, 3 mapped to 1, 6 mapped to 2, 7 mapped to 1, 8 mapped to 2. Right. So, these are the value is 1 rest of the b i r equal to 0. Right. So, I can understand that I need 2 multiplier which is a, I mean it give a solution that 1 3 7 is going to execute uh, using multiplier 1 and 2 6 and 8 is going to execute using multiplier 2. So, if you just uh, see here, so you can see that 1, 1 uh, 3 and 7. So, 1 3 and 7 this is the 1 3 and 7 and this is the 2 6 and 8 this is what the multiplier 1 this is my multiplier 1 this is my multiplier 2 and which is correct because you can see here uh, there is no conflict right. So, this ILP also give me the correct solution. Now, if I try to solve the problem for ALU uh, how many ALUs are there. So, this is one ALU this is one ALU operation there are one ALU operation here and there are two operations. Since there are two happening in parallel uh, I, I mean I need at least two ALU right. So, that A 1 and A 2 and you can if you can write the same constant again the way I have de de developed for multiplier you can write uh, that each ALU oper each operation going to map to only one of the ALU and for each timestamp each ALU should execute at most one of the operation right. And if you solve this problem it will give you it will say that you need two ALU and then it will give one of the solution that you map this 10, 11, 9 and 4 into one ALU which is possible because this 9, 10, 11, uh, this 5 and 4 because these, so these are all in different cycle right. So, this is in time stamp 1, this is time stamp 2, this is time stamp 3 and 3, this is 4 right. So, I can map all these 4 operation 10, 11, 4 and 5, I can execute using ALU 1 and I can use A 2 just to execute operation 9 ok. So, this is the, AL, uh, the solution that this uh, ILP will give you. Uh, actually there are many such mapping is possible, but every mapping is as long as that particular mapping satisfy the constraint the compatibility or the conflict constraints uh, it is a correct solution right. Once we look into the data path generation probably we will look into this if we just map this 4 operation into a few there will be lot of uh, multiplexer size will be more because there will be 4 input to the multiplier right you have to multiplex the inputs right. So, there are 1 ALU is going to execute 4 operations that means what? in every cycle you have to multiplex the uh, inputs that in time step 1 you give the inputs of this operation in time step 2 you give this operation of this operation in time step 3 you give the operation of this and in time step 4 you give the operation uh, uh, inputs of this operation right. So, what does it mean you have to multiplex the inputs for every time step uh, time step. So, the multiplexer size will be more and you can see here this opera uh, this opera a 2 is actually um, remain idle for most of the time ok. Probably I could have done this that I can do this 10, uh, 11. So, that this is also a possible correct mapping that 10, 11 and say 5 I am going to do this and then say a 2 is going to do 4 and 9. So, then probably the load for this uh, uh, of this multiplier reduced by 1 ok. So, once you construct the data path probably you have to look into this uh, mapping you try to do the mapping such a way that your multiplexer size is less right. So, that time probably you have to add some additional constraint to this ILP solver. So, that it actually understand that and make sure that it operates and get evenly distributed ok. So, that things we will discuss in subsequent classes ok. With this I conclude today's discussion. Thank you.